Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of art from the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday at 10 a.m., a staff member or a volunteer will share an object from the permanent collection and post some questions for discussion. Check back each weekday at 10 a.m. for a new look and a new conversation. I'm Carrie Atkins Maris. I'm the Associate Director for Community Engagement at the Cincinnati Art Museum. And today we are celebrating International Women's Day with a special conversation with artist Kim Flora. So we are going to first explore the focus object of the day with Kim, and then we'll move on to some other questions. Let's get started. The piece in the CAM collection that, that I'm gonna kind of focus on, I know there are a few. Um, so this piece is interesting to me because I can't really tell if it's representational or not. Tell me a little bit more about it. Absolutely, and I'm glad you really brought up that idea of is this something recognizable that I know? Is this familiar to me or is this not familiar to me? And that's something um, I am very interested in my uh, evoking in my work is um, creating something that's somewhat identifiable, but not necessarily telling the whole story. So the piece that we're talking about, um, Crossing the Seine, um, does focus on a particular bridge uh, an image of a bridge, the Pont Neuf, and uh, in Paris. So um, one of the other pieces that I sent you, Carrie, is a piece called Paris in My Twenties. This one. Yeah. And if you focus really hard on the center of that piece, you will also see that image. Um, so this, uh, the painting that we're talking about um, was created <laughs> from a process of, let's say, this image was created from another previous piece of artwork. So uh, the idea at the time, I was working uh, on a series of bridges and I'm interested in bridges because I sort of like that collision of architecture in nature. And with these bridge images, you can see here, there is that strong horizon line Mm -hmm. um, which again, what is this something that's an abstract image or is it a representational image? I do go back to these are landscapes for me um, and back to that horizon line. And then you asked more so about medium and in cost uh, mm -hmm. medium. Um, as I said, this, this image um, was digitally produced by scanning that prior painting. Um, so then I was able to kind of reduce that down, zoom in on that bridge. That then was reproduced digitally, um, adhered to a flat surface, and then I continued to manipulate that digital print. So this interview was quite a bit longer and we've condensed it down here for our Kim look. But in this section, I'm asking Kim about her journey and to explain her journey as an artist to me. Uh, to start, I guess, in general, on the journey, um, I was lucky enough to go to an art magnet school in Baltimore, um, a visual art magnet school, and, and at a very young age, I knew visual art was kind of the direction that I was going to move into. Um, I had an opportunity to see the Art Academy, and it, the city just really drew me in. Um, as you know, that's where I attended, and yeah. while painting was my was and is you know my primary interest it seemed sort of obvious to me to study art history <laughs> rewarded a uh, city of cincinnati um independent artist grant and so that allowed me to do some of the work that we talked about and the piece that actually is in the collection um from there i continued to show um more so locally, but but you know regionally, nationally, when those opportunities present themselves, um, I tend to work primarily 2D. Although as I say that, I'm exploring a lot more um, sculptural and 3D and installation things that um, I will reveal when they're ready. <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> actually, actually uh, manifest. I. I, I had a new uh, piece in, uh, of that vein um, in Manifest show. Oh, that's the amount of art that we have in the collection and how many artists are represented. And you even tried to do the math with 
you know, knowing that a lot of the artwork doesn't have an attribution at all. You know, we are making assumptions about gender when we think about that from from now looking back because, you know, we don't we don't know for sure how people identified, you know, 200 years ago necessarily. But taking all that into account, we have about 17% or so of women, mm -hmm. you know, artists represented. So that means that, you know, I'm not great at math, but that means that we have about 83% non-women represented in the, art, in the collection. <laughs> so the numbers really kind of tell the story of like, it's a really unique opportunity to have, to sit down with an artist who we have in the collection, we have access to, is gloriously alive, you know, so we can have conversations. Really. About, yeah, thank goodness. Um, you know, for the last question, I really wanted to ask you what it means to have a piece in the museum's collection. I honestly sort of, in struggle a bit w with um, accepting maybe that honor of being part of the collection, quite quite frankly. I kind of downplay it and really Aww. don't make as big, to, to, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly an honor, but then, yeah, and maybe these are my own like female hangups of, you know, am I worthy? Did I just get yeah. lucky? Did I just get lucky? You know, like I said, yeah, I don't know if there, it's been it's 10 years, but it hasn't really sunk in because I just am like, ah, I, I, you know, again, <laughs> I work there and uh, well, so, yeah, I, mean, it's I know, been I know kind of, you work there, but I don't think that I don't I really I, I don't think it's luck and I don't think it's because you work there. I think it's <laughs> it's a really interesting and valuable piece of work and we're lucky to have it. I just know and I think it, this is providing me an opportunity to to still, may maybe I'm still, dig honestly, I mean, I know it's been years, but I'm sort of digesting w what that means and what my role as a female artist in this city is. Um, I mean, I sort of took things in a different direction when I was thinking about that, that question. And I was thinking, frankly, thinking about some of my own kind of biases um in my work and how when i was first starting out i was very conscious and subconscious i think of avoiding particularly feminine subjects or feminine materials and i do feel more recently as i have matured and i guess as the museum you know art world kind of is more even <laughs> In yeah. its representation that's a new place that i can go that i was very maybe closed off to because i was trying to create um an idea of myself yeah. <laughs> where perhaps i was competing in a more general neutral you know in a landscape where i felt i had to make myself somewhat gender neutral if that yeah, yeah. And that's coming together. That. I mean, I think I hear that I I've, I've heard that from a lot of women artists that wow. There's a there's a you know, a compelling reason to be to 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 neutralize your femininity and your and yeah. make your work. I think, you know, I'm drawn to abstract expressionism and landscape and then now just I'm getting okay maybe with a narrative that is my work has always been narrative but maybe limited yeah. <laughs> and what I choose to to conceal and reveal. We're going to take one last look at Kim's work with the credit lines included and I want to thank Kim for her time and for sharing her work with us today. Happy International Women's Day to all of you and I'm going to leave you with a question which is how are you celebrating the women in your life today? Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.